together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Today, dear friends, I'd like us to reflect on the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. At the time, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, uh, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, and he was stripped, for he was stripped for work, and he sprang into the sea. But the other disciple came in in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out of the land, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and he hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, and the net was not torn, Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came and he took the bread and he gave it to them. So he did with the fish. This was now the third time that, John was, that Jesus was revealed to his disciples after he had been raised from the dead. It's an interesting story. Uh, this is chapter 20, this is chapter 21, rather, uh, of the Gospel of John. It is the last chapter. And you see the impact of the death of Jesus. You see what that did to the community in the early church. That Peter was going back to what he knew. He was going back to fishing. And he says, no, I'm, I'm going back. And and some of his companions were also living with him. They said, no, they're going. And, and so there are two things here for me. The first one is, how did Peter feel? How did he feel when, when Jesus died on the cross? He had given his life to Jesus. He had given his life into the ministry. And we know that Jesus had a, a, a public life, and this was like three years in the public. And, and so Peter would have probably been with Jesus for more or less three years. Peter was a fisherman. Uh, archaeology teaches us that Peter was a businessman. But he must have left that when he followed Jesus. And so at the end of three years, he realizes that the man I had invested in is dead. And then how does he deal with that? It's a big blow. Hence he goes back to what he knows. He goes back fishing. But the same applies to us. How do you deal with disappointment? How do you deal with failure? What do you do when things don't work out as planned? When you had said to yourself, this is what I would want to do. This is how I would like my life to turn out. And the opposite happens. 
How do we learn to pick up the broken pieces? How do we learn to face ourselves? How do we learn to face the world? How do we learn to adapt with the new to the new reality? Where do we fit in in all of this? It's easy to blame others. It's easy to blame the system. It's easy to lie in bed and curl up and if you sorry for yourself, it's easy. But you need to move on. You need to work at it. You need to keep at it at all times. You cannot afford to take a break. You cannot afford to give up. You cannot afford to withdraw. You cannot afford but to keep going. And I, I, I can sense the frustration in Peter. Sometimes there are decisions that one makes. They are not necessarily based on the best decision ever. Based on, I'm feeling good about this decision. No. Some decisions you have to make them not because you feel good about them, but because it is the necessary decision that needs to be made. I have no other option but to make this in order for us to move on and to become something better in life. And so I'm seeing the frustration in Peter and in some of his disciples. Now, they were fishing. Now, they were fishermen, but that night they didn't catch anything. And Jesus comes and he stands at the shore. Yet again, they do not recognize him. And there's this, this beautiful thing. They did not recognize him after the resurrection. At least initially. And as they did not recognize him, then he says to them, hey, have you caught anything? They said, no. And he says, why don't you throw it on the right? Now, if you were to listen to the synoptic gospels, you will realize that that's how Peter was called. He was found fishing. And Jesus invited them. He says, you know, I'll make you fishers of men. And, and so you realize that Jesus takes them back to what Possibly they have forgotten. And sometimes we can easily forget that. We can easily forget that it is by God's grace, by His mercy, that we are saved, not by our own human doing. No amount of intelligence will ever save us. No law will ever save us, but the grace of God will save us. It is the mercy of God. It is the grace that locates us. It is the mercy that sustains us. And so we soon realize, I need God. I need to be connected to Him. I need to be guided by Him. And when the, Jesus says, cast the net, the, net, the net onto the right hand side, one the one whom Jesus loved is the one who realizes that. He's the one who shouts out possibly and says, It's the Lord. And, and, and Peter immediately, immediately he realizes it's Jesus. Now, I find this absolutely amazing that when he realizes it's Jesus, he puts on his clothes. Yes, he was stripped because he was uh, fishing. But when, when Jesus, when he realizes it's Jesus, he puts on his clothes. It's like he brings back his dignity. It's like he, he says, wow, he came to look on us. He came to check on us. He came to see us. And that's a sign that we are important to him. And that is so true in our lives even today. That Jesus still comes and looks for us. That Jesus searches for us. That Jesus wants us to be better. He wants us to be better. He wants us to have a profound experience with God. He wants us to know that it's not over. That sin does not have the power. Evil does not have the power. But mercy, grace, and love does. That's the beauty of our faith. Now, when he puts on his clothes... It's like the Lord gives him back what he has already lost in sin. It's, it, it, it's a beautiful symbolism of not being alone in this journey. 
but continually being with God, continuously being absorbed into his own wonderful life and to be forgiven in and through him. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us to protect you, bless and guide us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.